My next guest is Nimrod Cohen, who's a venture partner at Plus Ventures, the first Israeli multi-vehicle early stage investment firm specializing in fast growth technology and media ventures. Nimrod has 10 years experience in startups and technology investments. He believes in the important role that investors play in supporting and instilling confidence in the startup community. Apart from capital contribution, the exchange of knowledge is vital in increasing the odds of success. The mission of Plus Ventures is to help great entrepreneurs create great companies. With that said, please help me in welcoming my next guest, Nimrod Cohn. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. I'd like to start out first by uh, wishing you Yom Huledet Sameach, happy birthday today. Thank you, wow. You know, I was so excited that you arranged this event only to celebrate my birthday, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 90s, during the dot-com boom, um, I built what was considered one of the top five ISPs, internet service providers in the country. And around 98, I started getting offers for the company and, and acquisition attempts. It was my largest or sell and exit at that time. But I remember thinking, you know, when do you exit? When is a good time to exit? And that time happened to be one day I was looking at the P.E. ratio of Yahoo, who was the search engine of the time, and it was at 1,000, meaning 1,000 years of earnings was its price valuation. How do you know when to get out and when to take the exit? That's a good one. Um... Well, if you excuse me, I have to tell you a little story, okay? Because I see so many people around here, and I'm so excited. Um, I was invited to speak in a European country um, a couple of months ago. And uh, when I got on the stage, I noticed that there's only one guy at the audience. And I'm like, uh, okay, if it's only me and you, we don't need the slides, right? We can go and have a beer or something. And he was like, I'd like to, but I'm the next speaker. So... <laughs> 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 so that's uh <laughs> yes, yeah, so great to see all of you here. Well, uh, <laughs> I try to be more serious now. Um, I think it's all about risk management. You know, the first thing is uh, how good is the offer that you get? I mean, if it's something huge, if it's something phenomenal, I guess it's easy. Just sell. Um, the thing is, when it's not phenomenal, you need to consider several things. I think uh, I divided it into two uh, aspects. The first one is the, the internal status of your company, and the second one is the, the external status of the environment, of the ecosystem, of the industry that you're at. And by saying the internal status of your company, I'm, I'm meaning uh, how much money do you have in the bank? How uh, far away are you from achieving your next KPIs that might get your valuation higher? Um, do I have uh, investors that are going to support my company in bad times as well as good times? Um, and when I'm saying external uh, um, um, aspect, I mean, uh, you know, it's all about trends and momentums, right? So if I'm right now, I'm, my company is in the field of, uh, I don't know, cyber, for example, and the trend began like five years ago, and it doesn't exist like five years ago, and it might not exist in two years, so I, I need to take that into consideration. I mean, if it's like the end of the trend, the end of the momentum, or it's like just the beginning of it, what is the valuation of companies in my field? If, if, it's like, if it sounds like a fair deal, if it uh, uh, sounds underrated, the, I, I think th those are the things that you need to take in, in, uh, under consideration, as well as the, the general atmosphere of the ecosystem, of the, of the economic. I mean, if it's going down, if it's, if it's stable, if it's going up. Excellent advice. You uh, told me earlier you um, manage a portfolio of tech companies, and some of those have had exits. Can you tell me a story about one of those exits? Well, I'll tell you a story. It's, uh, it's only between the, the two of us, right? No one, of course. Uh, yeah. Nobody else is here. So I can talk about numbers. Uh, I mean, that was a tough one. I'll, I'll be happy to uh, 
I'm, I'm not sure if we did right, but I, I'll, I'll be happy to, to share it. Uh, we invest, we are an early stage investors, okay? Usually we're the first investors where the valuation is very low and the risk is, is extremely high. So we invested in a company called Meerkat. I'm not sure if, uh, if you're familiar with. We, we were the first investor. The valuation was like $800,000, very low valuation, because they came with just an idea, and it's a very risky. It's a B2C, and it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, so they did pretty well. They did their round A, and after two years or so, uh, there was great buzz around them at the Silicon Valley. And uh, they were doing a round of $15 million. And the valuation was about 70 times the valuation that we invested in. And it was over subscription, and, uh, and everyone wanted to get in. And they asked us to sell our shares. No, that's a tough one, right? I mean, what do you guys think we needed to do? To share, to stay? Let's poll the audience. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what would you do? Raise your hand. And, and if, I just I, I give you on. some more information, OK? The, the, the type, it's the type of, of company that it's one or zero, OK? If it's booming, it's a billion dollar company. And if not, it's nothing. It's a B2C game. It's a billion dollar or nothing. We invested. The valuation was less than one million. After two years, the valuation was 70 times or 65 times the valuation we invested. What should we do? Sell. Raise your hand if you'd sell the company, take the money, and go. Okay, how many would hold on and ride it out? There are people that raise their hand twice. I mean, you see? <laughs> <laughs> you see? What did you do? Actually, we raised our hand twice because we, sell, we sold half. Somebody so, in the front row said see? that. <laughs> uh, so I, I think that's, that's, uh, that's an example of uh, not a clear-cut situation. And, and uh, honestly, most of our lives as investors is not a clear-cut situation. I mean, the clear-cut situations are like, I don't know, just uh, once in a while. Most of the times, it's, it's tough decisions. How are we doing time-wise? Died. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, they were head-to-head -head with Periscope that uh, uh, Twitter decided to acquire in a nice deal. And they will keep going for a while. They still have enough money. And uh, we're, actually, it's them. We're just trying not to disturb them. They're good guys. They decide to use the money and to think of uh, uh, another direction. And I'm sure you're going to hear about the new direction soon because they are like, th th actually, the reason that we invested in a B2C company in the early stage, that's like crazy. That's like, uh, I don't know, that it was them playing poker, OK? It's because of the team. They are great. And they're thinking outside the box. And then they're going to do it again. Nimrod, Israel has more NASDAQ-listed companies than any other country outside the U.S., more than all of Europe, India, Japan, and China combined. How does the country the size of New Jersey end up with the second highest concentration of startups in the world, and what can we learn from Israel's global success? It's because we're Jewish. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't mean to make fun that night. I mean, that's. <laughs> um, I think that this advantage of being a small country uh, can work for you in uh, some situation as this one. Because in Israel, there is no startup uh, that's looking at the local uh, market. market. From the very first meaning, from um, branding the name of the company and the product, from the URL, okay? There is no startup in Israel that's going to buy the URL ended up with C-O-I-L, okay? They're always going to buy the .com or, or some other new uh, uh, URLs. Um, so for the very first meaning, they're not looking about the local market. Because even if they're going to control the local market, it's not big enough. So they're looking at the American market and, and other places. So if they're doing good, it's big time. And other places around the world that I travel and, and I'm talking to entrepreneurs, they look at the local market and they're like, that's fair enough. I mean, think about Germany or France. I mean, if, if they're doing good there, it's like they can make some decent money. And the thing is that if you're looking at the local market and you brand your, uh, your, your, brand your product and company for the local market, and after three or four years that you control your local market, you want to go globally, it's very hard. 
it's very hard because the, the, sometimes the product is different, the UI is different, the people are, are, are different. It's very hard after you focus on your local market to expand to the international market. And I think that's one of the reasons why Israel is as a small country, but I look globally. So I think that's just one of the reasons. I mean, there are, there are many reasons. It started from the army. It started from, I think, that uh, um, what we learn and how we grow up is like uh, we have to be innovative. We just have to be innovative. If you won't be innovative, we'll, we'll probably die, okay? And we can't miss. We can't do our best and, okay, that's okay. We just can't miss. This is how we grow up. This is how they teach us. Just can't miss. Um, so that and the special units that we have in the army and the academic and the support of the government and uh, some other stuff like, you know, in Israel, if you work for the government or for Microsoft, your friends and family are going to tell you, you're wasting your time. Why, why don't you create your own company? And in most other places in the world, if you work for the government or for Microsoft and you're going to leave your job and start a startup, your father going to kill you. It's the Jewish guilt. Exactly. <laughs> I think we're out of time. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you all. <laughs>